Hey guys, I wanted to do a quick video about a cool uh, little accessory I got for my new Sony a6600. Um, I've only had this camera for about three or four weeks now, so I'm still getting used to it. Um, but one of the things I discovered is that the flip up screen that it has is pretty good as long as the camera is within three or four feet of you. But when I have the camera further back, like if I'm doing stand up work and I, I you know, I'm teaching lessons and things like that, and I want, I want to get more in the frame, I have to put the camera further away. And then guess what? I really can't see if I'm in focus. I can't see what the meters are on the screen and uh, at least the one that's built into the A6600. So I wanted something a little bit bigger that I could move closer to the front of the camera. And uh, that is how I came across this guy. This is uh, called a Timber Cod. Kind of a strange name, but if you can look past the name, I, I think you'll kind of like this product. It's a DC56. It's a five and a half inch uh, 4K Ultra HD monitor. And that 4K actually doesn't mean that you're looking at 4K resolution on the field monitor. What it means is that it can accept a 4K signal from the camera and, and uh, downsample that to the 1920 um, by 1080 resolution that you get on this without there being a noticeable delay, which is important because you don't want to have a, you know, a one and a half or two second delay on the screen from what's happening in real life uh, because nobody wants that. So I was looking for something that didn't have an external battery to it um, because I didn't want to mess with that. It's one more thing I got to worry about. Uh, something that I could charge directly and something that came with all the little bits and pieces that I would need to get up and running right away. And this thing really seems to fit that bill. So what you've got here, you, it actually charges via an AC adapter that's included. Um, there is no snap-on battery. It's integrated into the body of the unit, which I will also say is, is pretty nice and rugged. It's aluminum construction. It's not real plasticky. It feels really well made. Um, it's got a quarter 20 on the bottom. As you can see, I've mounted it to this little mini tripod. It's got a quarter 20 on the side as well. And these are both quarter 20 uh, female inputs. It comes with a little um, cold shoe mount with a pivot um, on it that allows you to mount it to the, one of the quarter 20s there. So you can mount it to your camera's flash mount or any accessory uh, cage you might have for your camera with a cold shoe mount on it. And interestingly, there is actually a quarter 20 in the bottom of this cold shoe mount as well. So this is really well made. My only little complaint about this particular little accessory, in order to adjust the pivot, you got to use an Allen wrench. And they do give you the Allen wrench. I just, I don't know why that's not like a little wing nut or something that I can turn without having to tighten it with an Allen wrench. Now, the good news is, is because it is an Allen wrench, if you're not going to change the position of this, once you get it w the way you want it, you just cinch it down and never worry about it again. Um, so I guess, you know, there is that. And then it does come with kind of a standard uh, cold shoe mount with that doesn't pivot sort of a normal style with a, uh, a male quarter 20 on the top. This one does not have a quarter 20 female on the bottom, but it just gives you yet another option. It does come with both or two styles of uh, HDMI cable. Um, I, so I won't need one of them. My camera only uses the sort of micro HDMI to a full HDMI. And the HDMI on here is a full uh, size HDMI connector on the field monitor. And then last but not least, uh, it's got like this three jointed, uh, two ball joints and sort of a ratchet joint in the middle uh, extension bracket. So you can mount this thing however you need to mount it and get the angle that you need to get. Uh, and this feels also very well made, kind of heavy duty. So everything that I needed to get up and running, and it comes in a little bag, which who cares. Um, but uh, so what else is on this? This has got a, I want to say a 3500 milliamp hour battery uh, into it. It's default brightness setting, which is plenty bright. Uh, I was able to get three hours and 15 minutes worth of runtime out of this, of continuous uh, video stream. Um, so that's not bad. Um, it has a USB um, mini, not a micro, but a mini. So it's slightly bigger than the one you'll see uh, on the USB micro uh, connectors on the older Android style. This is the, the predecessor to that. But what that allows you to do if you have a cable that goes from that to another USB device. You can actually power another USB device from this and use this kind of like a little USB charge brick. Um, I've not tried that feature, but that's what that port is for. You just need the right cable to do it. So I'm not sure why they chose a USB mini instead of a micro, but that's what it is. Um, it does have on the bottom, I don't know if you can make it out underneath a little uh, leg there, but it's got a uh, an AV RCA jack in, and it's got a, a three and a half millimeter jack for audio out, which I find to be really nice if I want to play back 
uh, some previews of my recordings and see them in a larger form factor than what is on the camera. It saves me from having to pop out the memory card and go put it in the computer uh, quite often. So anyway, that's the basics of the features of, of the field monitor. So let's uh, take a look and see exactly how it works. Now, as you can see, when the camera detected the external monitor, uh, because I was in 4K mode, it shut off the monitor here on, on the camera. Now I see everything over here on the, on the field monitor. Now it's a little bit bright, so I'm actually going to adjust the contrast here. So I'll push the uh, button over here in the middle, and then I can kind of uh, push it over here again to go to the next middle spot here and down to brightness. I'll enter, and then I'm going to lower the brightness to make this a little easier to see on screen. Hopefully if I put that down around, say, 30, maybe that'll do it. And then this far button on the right-hand side here is kind of like the back button. All right, so it looks really dark in real life, but through the video, hopefully it, that picture looks a little bit better. But what it does show you is some things that I have activated. You can see I've got turned on um, the, um, the meter on the side. So I'm getting audio meter here, and this is coming from the field monitor. Now I also happen to be getting the audio meter here um, on the display that's coming from the camera. So this one's coming through the HDMI port. This one's coming through uh, the, the camera feed. So that's the difference between these two meters. Um, I'll also have the battery indicator turned on, and I've got my nine grid rule of thirds turned on as well. So we can clear up some of that screen here if we were to go uh, to the menu. Um, again, you can adjust all of these, color temperature, backlight, all the stuff, brightness, contrast, saturation. Uh, you can adjust all that to your heart's content. Uh, I'm going to go down to the function button, and here you can see where we can go and enable uh, focus peaking. We can choose what color we want focus peaking to be, and uh, exposure. We can turn that on and off. That will turn on the uh, zebra grid. Um, if, I, if I were to choose that, for example, um, I'll come down to exposure. You can see I get uh, at 100% or I can choose 70%. So at 70%, it's going to show me I'm getting close to clipping and it's going to give me a heads up on that. And if I were to back out of this, you can see a lot of blue in there because that's what I got my peaking set on. But uh, everything shows up as underexposed in this case, except for this little bit on the histogram. So obviously that's not terribly relevant here, but I'm going to go back over there and change that. Oops. Go down to function, enter, go down to exposure, and just toggle that off. All right. Now, some of the other stuff that's on the screen. So you can see here on the mark screen, this is where I get some of the indicators for framing, uh, whether I want the border to be transparent, whether I want it to, the mark in the center to be white or some other color. I can change the thickness of the center mark. I can turn on the nine grid or the rule of thirds like I have right now. So I'm actually going to turn that off because I don't really need that on right now. So I come over here and turn that off. And then I will back out of that. And we'll go down to waveform. Here's where you can turn on the volume bar that gives you the audio meter here on the right hand side. You can turn on the histogram, uh, which I currently have off. So the histogram we're seeing right now is coming from the camera. So if I happen to be in a mode on the camera that it does not give me this extra information, and that is a case for, for some things here, and I'll, as you'll see, um, it's handy to be able to turn that on um, on the field monitor itself. Same with the audio meter. So for example, I'll kind of show you what I mean. If I go over here to the camera and I tell it I'm going to, instead of uh, be in 1080, I want to go up to 4K mode. All right, when I'm in 4K mode, it shows me both displays. Uh, I'm still seeing the menu over here. I can get out of that, All right? And I can see my audio meters here, uh, but I may not be able to see that anywhere else. I can see I've got my histogram on. I can change my uh, display characteristics. This is all on the camera itself, but nothing changes over here on the field monitor. So when I'm filming in 4K, I pretty much get a clean output. Um, so if I were to, let's say for example, uh, change my uh, ISO. So I've got zebras turned on over here. So if I turn my ISO up to increase the exposure here, uh, you can see I get, maybe I did it too far for the 
I'm using my cell phone to film this part. This is pretty tricky. But you can see, if, make out I'm getting some zebras here on the camera, but the zebras do not appear on the field monitor. So the way that we can turn those on the field monitor, as I had showed you before, is I can come down to, um, oops, go back up there, to function, hit enter, and come down to exposure, and I can turn that on, and so I'll say at 100, and then I'll back out of that, and what you'll see is as I get brighter, I'm getting all kinds of zebras over here, and these may not come out in the video very well, and I apologize for that. The zebras are still there. Hopefully they're showing up. Um, but uh, it's pretty obvious in person. It's nice to be able to see that I'm clipping in those spaces here because the zebras from the camera do not get transmitted when I'm filming in 4K. So let me go ahead and set ISO back to where I had it or somewhere approximate, maybe there. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off the zebras because I don't really need them here. Go down to exposure, enter, and then toggle off. It does take you about 20 or 30 seconds to get used to the, you know, the button navigation here, since this is not a touch screen. That would be nice if it were a touch screen, but that would also increase the cost significantly. So for, for about a hundred bucks, I'm willing to do without the, the uh, touch screen. So if I could go back into the menu and I come back down into waveform, this is where if I needed to, um, again, I activate my volume bar. I could turn on the histogram from here. Now I'm getting the histogram from the field monitor, not from the camera, right? So the field monitor is able to provide me a histogram if that's important. You can also, uh, I'll turn that one off and then I'll back up one and you've got your RB, uh, RGB histogram. So you can see the colors in there, hopefully. Turn that off. Uh, you've got the vector function, and I'm not going to pretend I actually know uh, what these do, but that'll make sense to somebody, I assume. Actually, I will turn those off. And then um, Parade it kind of breaks it out into a different set of plots. And you can see there's standard RGB. And again, I'm not going to pretend like I know what these modes do, but they give you different looks at the uh, saturation of your primary colors there. So I will toggle that to off. And that is pretty much all there is to the waveform. Now I mentioned there's four, uh, in addition to the power key, which is right here on top, there is one, two, three, four function keys uh, on top as well, on the right hand half of the, of the monitor. And so if I come down to the function key menu, you can see I got F1 through F4. And then you can assign the primary function to any one of these function keys. So the four things that you find that you want to change most to enable them or to do anything with them, uh, like I've got zoom assigned to function one. So if I get out of the menu, oops, and framing is set to function four. <laughs> so there's that. But if I wanted to zoom in, you can see it's going to start zooming in. And I'm at 4x right now. Not a particularly interesting picture. Um, if I keep hitting F1, it'll go up to, I think, 10x. Yeah, and then it goes back to off. So it cycles through multiple zoom modes back to an off position. So I don't have to get into the menu for the four things that I'm most interested in changing the most often. So it's nice to be able to assign those. And then last but not least, we have the menu settings on the bottom. So this allows me to set a few things like the volume level. So if I'm using the headphone jack on the bottom to preview the audio in real time while I'm filming, or if I'm doing playback to check uh, the quality of what I just recorded, um, and I want to use headphones for the, to check the audio, um, this helps me adjust the, uh, the volume for that. Um, I can also turn on whether this battery indicator is on or not. So very straightforward stuff. Um, has a lot of functionality built in there for you. And as you can see from the, you know, from the different things, uh, different modes that I might film on the A6600, um, I, I wouldn't otherwise, and, and I usually film in 4K on this, I wouldn't be able to see my audio meters on here because the Sony does not pipe them out via HDMI when I'm using 4K. So it's really nice to be able to add that here. Um, same with the histogram, if that's something you're into. I don't really uh, rely on the histogram a whole lot, uh, but that might be useful to, to, uh, to you guys. So... Anyway, I just wanted to kind of run through some of the main features of this. Uh, it's pretty cool, very easy to use, 
takes you a couple minutes to kind of flip around the menus and you pretty much get the idea how it all works. So I hope you found that information useful. Uh, hopefully it gave you a sense of how this uh, field monitor works with a Sony a6600. Um, for me, it does exactly what I wanted to do. I don't really miss the fact that it doesn't have a touch screen, not something that I really need, but it does all the things that I need, needed to do. So for about a hundred bucks on Amazon, um, for me, it was kind of a no brainer uh, piece of gear for my camera kit. And uh, it's something that I'm going to continue to use for a long time to come. So thanks for watching the video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up. We'd really appreciate it. If not, well, feel free to hit the thumbs down button twice. That works too. And uh, if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. Um, I do plan on doing more of these A6600 related uh, videos, including some accessories that I have got that I'm kind of testing out now. And I want to see uh, how well they perform. And I will be happy to share my experiences with you in future videos on those accessories. And um, as usual, these are accessories that I bought with my own money. So they're not sponsored reviews and uh, just want to convey information where I think it might be helpful. So thanks again. And uh, we'll hope to see you in the next one until then. Have fun out there.